um, something that is, you know, going on right now that I think definitely warrants our attention. We haven't really covered it yet on our show, uh, but that would be the trial of Derek Chauvin, who, of course, murdered um, George Floyd last summer. I, I figured we could get a little bit into this. Uh, a story I pulled today was about George Floyd's ex-girlfriend testifying um, about his drug use and their relationship. And of course, uh, right-wingers, a lot of people on that side of the aisle have, have pointed to George Floyd's drug use as if it somehow um, you know, makes this situation different, as if you know, Derek Chauvin is somehow off the hook because George, George Floyd used drugs, uh, which, is, which is crazy considering he kneeled on his neck for nine minutes. I mean, I could go up to someone overdosing on the street and shoot them in the face and I'm still a murderer, you know, like I don't really understand what that fact is, how that fact is relevant. Um, but the point is that uh, his girlfriend, you know, has been talking about this in the trial and, and described that they actually both uh, were victims of opiate addiction, essentially thanks to pain. Um, so that's really tragic in and of itself that uh, you have this man addicted to opiates, not because, you know, he's a degenerate or whatever, but um, because he had back pain, essentially. So, uh, you know, that's just really sad in and of itself, I think. Well, and it's also indicative of a, a broader cultural problem, right? And how we want to selectively see people as human and, you know, other people as, yep. you know, as, as, as something besides that, right? And this is kind of, you know, the Fox News audience loves to do that. Like, they love to be selectively sympathetic with people who struggle with opioid addiction, right? Yep. If you look like somebody like me or Gavin, then they're much more likely to you know, put a picture of you up and be like, oh, isn't it tragic? This guy, uh, you know, he was just working really hard. He hurt himself. And then he got wrapped up in this, you know, big old mess. Yep. Whereas if you look like George Floyd, then, oh, this is an excuse to have you extra right. executed extrajudicially by a police officer on the side of the road in the middle of the daytime right. in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And, you know, yeah, I mean, the first time I saw this headline that it was, you know, that, that his ex-girlfriend was even talking about his struggles and her struggles i was like this is too much for our society to understand this is going to be weaponized and used to undermine him and challenge his humanity uh you know and, and and try and you know uh create a wedge between you know him and otherize him even more than he already is as a black man in america um you know uh, but yeah kamali what's your reaction to all of this yeah i think that like you said this is the common tack from the whenever you're dealing with prosecutors and the right wing you're going to get this this uh, you know, character assassination attempts of any victim of these, you know, crimes when it's a black victim. Immediately, the first thing that we do is we have to we have to go into whether you know what's their history, what's every you know, did they ever steal a piece of gum? Did they you know you know didn't remember to tell their mother they loved them before they went to bed at night? Uh, you just you hear every little you know every little detail and and anything that they can use to sensationalize and demonize these people and try to dehumanize and that's what it's really the, the tactic is all about is just about dehumanizing these people and so that people can dissociate themselves from from it and you know not feel any sort of concern when we know what is likely to happen ultimately happens when justice is not served and this cop ends up you know going free they they'll be able to point to it and say, oh, well, you know, this, this monster, you know, that he was apprehending was such a danger. And, and that's what it's meant to do is to paint him as some sort of, you know, one, it's the health, you know, they're trying to somehow claim that, you know, it was, it was, you know, the, him being an occasional user of drugs that led to his death, not the fact that he had a knee placed on his neck for nine right. and a half minutes while he lay there cuffed and unconscious. Uh, you know, it's it's had to be the drugs and also the potential for them to paint it as well he was on drugs so therefore he was a danger and he you know this cop was protecting himself by uh, apprehending him in this inhumane yeah. way well that's the thing that i think is the main takeaway from this story it, it, it's so ironic that right wingers like i said and you know I'm, I'm not just people on the right but people that want to defend the police in this instance are are pointing to the fact that um floyd was on drugs or had drugs in his system as proof that chauvin did nothing wrong but in reality uh, the whole incident is proof that the police are just wildly mistrained to 
actually help people and, and handle situations wherein people desperately need help. So, you know, maybe Chauvin was on drug or maybe, sorry, Floyd was on drugs. And, you know, maybe he was literally even overdosing right in front of Chauvin's eyes uh, is the correct response as a, you know, public servant to kneel on the neck of someone who's in overdosing and needs uh, help. Wouldn't the correct response be to take that person to the hospital or at very least call an ambulance or EMTs, people that could properly take care of the situation. This seems like complete, you know, proof that we need to rethink policing, to defund the police, to reinvest in resources that can adequately respond to situations like this. Because again, even if Floyd was literally overdosing on fentanyl right in front of his eyes, uh, the last I heard, proper protocol was not to kneel on the neck of an overdose -y. Well, that's what's fucking crazy is that there was an EMT trained firewoman, I believe, on site witnessing this as it went down and the police prohibited her from intervening. She noticed so that this person was a victim in this situation. She noticed that he was in need of immediate medical attention. And the police, the people who are supposed to protect and serve in our society, which, of course, uh, they do selectively, if at all. Um, you know, they, 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 they were instead more prioritized on protecting whatever the fuck uh chauvin was doing then then allowing this person to step in and do their job which they would have been far better trained to do than uh the police anyway had you know in this you know what what um you know specific uh i guess version of reality where he was you know it, it doesn't matter there, the countless ways in which derek chauvin acted uh you know incorrectly to put it in the absolute most mild polite terms mm -hmm. essentially it, it, they stack multiply on top of each other and every Every time you look at this more closely, you see that this person was acting as if they thought that they had the impunity of the world behind him, that they could treat any human being, especially black human beings, as disposable. And then that's exactly what he did. Right. And he, you know, he thought he was invincible. And, um, you know, it, it, in this fucking country, he might find out that he is.